How's it going, guys? Welcome to this episode of the Pursuit of Calling podcast with me, your host, Thomas Carney. In this episode, I got to sit down with Cole Zimmerman, and we talked a lot about the creative space because, you know, he's a creative guy, and he works for Amplify Church part-time that also has a lot of his own side businesses going on with his wife and on his own, which is really cool. We also dive into the difference between knowledge and wisdom. And if you guys would be so kind to share this episode out on your so on Instagram, Facebook, or wherever you listen to the podcast, give it a five-star review and give us a comment. But before we dive in, I want to ask you to send me a message. If you have any questions or you want me to talk on a particular topic or you just want to say some encouraging words, uh, you can do so on Instagram or via the email that is listed in the show notes of this episode. Thank you and let's dive in. Hey Cole, how's it going? Great, how are you? <laughs> <laughs> doing good, doing good. Um, yeah guys, so you heard Lee a couple episodes ago recommend Cole Zimmerman for the podcast and so he here he is. Here I am. <laughs> All my glory, here I am. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> <laughs> um so we were just getting catching up a little well not even catching up we were getting like maybe just having a conversation beforehand yeah because we've never really like had a full conversation I mean, you've heard this before about other guests i've had on before mm-hmm. but like uh no like we're getting to know each other a little bit uh and for people that don't know you that well uh who's cole zimmerman who am i that is not the question i um i am an artist i'm a videographer I am a Christian. I work at Amplify. Um, that we know each other through church. I am the videographer there, um, doing social stuff, um, video projects in service. You know, big stuff like Christmas or whatever. Um, but then I also do that um, on the side. I, my wife and I, shoot weddings together, um, and I do freelance stuff like ads, um, whatever. Um, yeah, I I'm kind of uh, all over the place, but. Um, all creative things, lots of, lots of video all the time. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So, yeah. Nice. Um, and that's like whenever we first were messaging back and forth, um, that's like the one, that's what you focus on. You were like, you're, you're the creative, you're a creative person. Yeah. That's like where all of your, like, um, like you just said, like, that's like, that's everything that you do, even for money, for a living, like that's where it's there, even for to serve and do it for free. Like that's what, like, that's what you want to do. Yeah. Um, and like, we all have like, um, a reason behind why we do what we do. Right. We all have like, I like, I like, I like to think that, uh, that's kind of like the push forward or the call that we have in our lives. And like that pushes us to do these certain things, the passions that we have. Mm-hmm. We believe as Christians that they come from God. Yeah. Um, and like this, with this podcast being the pursuit of calling, uh, what inspired you to like be that creative person? Yeah, I um, I feel like it was never even like a second thought that yeah. like when I was a kid, like my mom is an artist too. Like she um, she works in like glass mosaic um, art yeah. um, and like painting and like watercolor and she just she's crazy. Um, so like I was always around it growing up and like from a very young age, I was always um, just like, you know, I felt drawn to drawing. I don't know. Um, I felt drawn to art and I started like when I was a kid, I got really into um, like traditional like studio art, like drawing and painting and like sculpture and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Um, And then when I um, was like, I think it was like 14, 15, something like that. um, I got my first camera and I got into photography um, in like early high school. And then that transitioned into video and then um, it just really kept snowballing. And there just, there was never a point in my life where I was like, I can't picture doing something other than this, mm-hmm. like for a living or doing something else for a living. I would always be doing this on the side if I couldn't yep. make it a living. Um, so I feel very um, grateful and very lucky um, that I have been able to, I guess, monetize it, that it is literally all that I do. Yeah. Like like you said, like for a living and, you know, for fun. Um, and like to serve the church and everything, it's just pretty much all day, every day in some capacity, I'm doing something creative, you know, (laughs) here or there. Um, but yeah, I guess 
there just never was another another option for me. Hmm. That's pretty cool. I um I can relate to that to in a different way. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cause like my for me it was never like. I, I have this entrepreneurial mind and I feel like you have that too with like all the, you have like your side business, your businesses and other like selling you do by yourself and with your wife. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I've, I've had that maybe this has maybe been like the last five, six years of my life. I mean like I've been like, yeah, I really want to start a business mm-hmm. and even in college, like maybe I'll do freelance at some point. Um, and I did for a little bit, like we were talking about before. Um, but like, I've always been like, I, I've always been like, I want to have my own business or do try to do something on, on the side, something that's not just my job. Mm-hmm. And that like, that's like a, uh, and for me, like I've said on the podcast before, is this it's like, uh, being a life coach is really what I want to do. Mm, like, that's, that's interesting. um, like I'm an app developer, so it's a weird like it's a, it has a weird kind of thought. <laughs> yeah, that, that pipeline's pretty narrow. <laughs> um, but like it's like I've, but I came across that in way of becoming a life coach in a very like, um, I don't know, for me it was a step by step process to find like that's sure. what I want to do. But the entrepreneurial, so I was always there. Like mm-hmm. this podcast, I try to use it at like to feed that part of me to do something that's a little bit more than my uh, do something more than in my job. And eventually, a, as a stepping stone into a larger business. Mm-hmm. But it's also a like my goal is to like to serve to help people. Yeah, and that's kind of what this uh, I don't know. That's, that's kind of like what I believe like the purpose of a business is, mm. is to serve yeah, uh, and to help people. So, but I know I'm kind of going off on a tangent, but yeah, no, I, I, I just like that. You were like, it's always kind of been with me. It's always been what I w- wanted to do. And, um, and like, I don't know. I just find that really interesting. Cause like, I don't know. I don't know if it was my, my, I don't know if mine was with me the whole life. You know, mm-hmm. it might have been. Like, yeah. I, I remember, like, me, as a kid, like, hey, there's a computer store. May I have a computer store one day? Yeah. And I was like, all these just random thoughts. Because my dad had uh, is a carpenter. It does has his own business. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's always been like, I know it's possible. I know it's a thing. Um, yeah, I do feel um, like you said, like it might have always been with you, but you you weren't aware of it. I feel mm-hmm. like, um, obviously, this is. Um, not a hot take among uh, Christians <laughs> pursuing their calling, but it's like all of the pieces are lining up throughout your whole life to then bring you to this point to yeah. then um, put you in the position to be like, Oh, like I want to become a life coach or like, I want to have a, you know, a podcast to like have these conversations and like, you know, building up that um, part of your personality and your interests. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, um, it's very easy now that like I am a full time like videographer and creative that it's very easy to say like, oh, this was always what I was going to do. Mm-hmm. Um, and that is half true that it was always what I wanted to do. But it wasn't I didn't always believe that like this was actually going to pan out. Mm-hmm. I was yeah. like, I'm going to have to get a real job at some point. <laughs> like I can't just take videos all the time. Um, but yeah, like I'm very um, grateful that I have kind of fallen into these um, situations that I feel like God has like placed these opportunities in my life to then, um, I've been able to capitalize upon, Yeah, you know, so it's fun. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, so we, I guess you kind of talked about it, but let's go more in depth of like, like how as pursuing that part of your, your life, like, well, f- well, actually first, I didn't have this in the notes, so I apologize, <laughs> but the, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're talking about calling, like what part of this, like how would you define your calling in mm. a sense? Yeah. Um, I mean, this is pretty cut and dry, but I feel like yeah. at, at the basic level, it's just to create. I yeah. feel like I, um, I didn't, well, a little context to this first. I didn't grow up Christian. Like my mm-hmm. parents aren't, um, they're just like agnostic, I guess. Um, they're like not practicing. So then I fell um, I was invited to youth group and then I kind of, you know, became, um, Christian and like, uh, you know, started building a relationship with Jesus in like middle school. Okay. So I, even like as a kid, I wasn't like, this is something, this is a passion that like God has put inside me. Cause I didn't know that then. Right. Um, but then as I, especially growing up through high school and then like going to college and everything, I'm like developing that, um, understanding more so. Um, 
But yeah, all that to say, I feel like I've always had like an innate like passion and interest in like creating. And now I can like articulate that as like um, when I see like, I don't know, the when I see the the beauty of the earth around us, yeah. um, it's such a um, like, I don't know, this is kind of a tangent, but I feel like nowadays with everybody um, on social media, everybody's taking pictures on their phone all the time. It is, um, you're trying to translate this experience that you're experiencing to then, um, share it with people. Yeah. Um, which is obviously a great thing for the most part. Um, and I feel like that has always been a part of my creative, like passion of like, I'm seeing these things around me and I want to capture that in the most beautiful way um, to then translate that and like evoke that emotion again, if mm-hmm. that makes sense. Yeah. Um, and that applies to like mainly or primarily video for me. Um, but also like creating, you know, art, creating a painting that is, um, in line with, um, just making people feel emotions. Um, and I always say, um, that like, being a creative and a Christian is kind of, it's like a, um, what's the word? It's like a, um, a fleeting exercise that like you're trying, you're always trying to create something beautiful when you will never, um, get to the, the innate beauty of the actual creator. Like he is, I, I said that in a weird way, but like, um, especially creativity in the church is like, I'm always trying to, um, create beautiful things that are, um, representative of like, um, his grace and his glory and like the, the culture of heaven. But I know that that is not, is never going to be close to what it actually is like. Mm -hmm. So it's always forever chasing that. Like, how can I make this more accurate? How can I make this more beautiful? How can I make X, Y, Z, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's that like you're always chasing that always like perfecting the craft more. Mm -hmm. Um, but so in some ways it's like, (laughs) I know I'm not going to get there. You know, I know I'm I'm never going to make anything that looks, um, anything close to like what he has created, but it is that like chase that like keeps it going, Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. There is, I've kind of like, we did a, I don't know if we did an episode on perfection, but we definitely talked about it before on the podcast. So, like, yeah, Sean and I talked about, like, uh, perfection mm-hmm. and, uh, and, like, a- a- excellence. We, were, we did, like, a whole series on excellence mm-hmm. um, a while ago. And, like, what we the way we kind of said the same thing you just said mm-hmm. in, in, in the fact of trying to, like, reach the perfection that is God. Yeah. Like, but like, like to me, it's like, you're never going to reach that. You're never going to be perfect as, as God is perfect, but like you can, um, that's something you could strive for. Mm-hmm. That's something you can like continuously, like there's like, there's no ceiling to your improvement at that yeah. point. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which I find is very encouraging. Yeah. Like there's sure. no ceiling. You're never going to, like there's never going to be a, a time where you, where you, uh, where you won't be able to, to grow. Yeah. Where you, you peak and then that's right. it. It's like, it's all only downhill from here. Yeah. <laughs> like that doesn't happen. <laughs> yeah. It is, it is such a double sided coin because it is like, if you are like a perfectionist or you're yeah. striving for perfection or like pure excellence on one hand, it's like, you won't be perfect and right. you need to, grasp that but also like perfection is the the path to greater um excellence and mm-hmm. you know quality in whatever you're you're doing mm-hmm. and then, yeah and that translates like right back to what you were saying like you're like you can always and i don't know if you're trying to like oh how can i i don't know if you think of how can i improve what i did in that last painting or if you're mm-hmm. just like how can i just keep making beautiful things yeah yeah it it's a little bit of both. Like there are in every, um, medium, I guess, you know, photo or video or design or painting or like anything, um, that any creative person does. It's like each time you create something, it is like a, it's a vulnerable experience of like, I'm 
making this thing that I think is good mm -hmm. with the skills that I have. And then I'm putting it out in the world yeah. and saying, Hey, do you like this? Yeah. <laughs> and like people either do, do or don't. Yeah. Um, but so it's like that experience is, um, like is always how it goes. And every time I like deliver a wedding video, I'm like, well, this was their, this is their wedding day. This yeah. is it. And if they don't like it, there's nothing I can do. Cause that I just missed that shot or whatever. So right. it's, I'm always nervous about that. Um, I had to say like that creative um, experience is also um, each time you make something, you are um, building up the skills and the little putting little things in your toolbox on yeah. how to do that next time. Mm -hmm. And um, I always say to people, like especially in um, like wanting to get into video mm -hmm. um, of they're like, oh, like what's like the best um you know, like YouTube channel to watch for tips or like, what should I do? Like, uh, read a book on like, blah, 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 whatever. Like, what are your, your resources? And I'm like, you literally just have to go out and do it. Like you have yeah. to shoot and you have to get comfortable with a camera and have to get comfortable editing because there's so many things. It's such a, a wild, like, I'm sure you can relate to this with, um, like development too. Um, that like looking back, like I just edited a video this morning mm -hmm. and I'm like, I, I'm doing this like 30% faster than I could have a year ago. Yeah. And then like before that even, um, and like every little experience is like adding, um, a skill on like, Oh, well now next time I know how to do this faster. Mm -hmm. Or I, um, sorry. I, um, whenever I'm like trying to capture a shot and I'm like, Oh, I, in my mind, I'm like, I want it to look like this yeah. before, um, or like when I was just starting out, it's like, I don't know actually how to get there, um, and how to make this look better. But now, um, and this will continue to go on as we were just saying, um, the more I strive for perfection, like I have all of these, um, little skills and I'm like, I can combine that with this. And then, then this will, um, get me closer to that ideal vision in my head, which I still won't reach. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, but it's just, it's a compounding experience, you know, each time you make something, yeah. you know, which is, that's part of the fun, but it's also frustrating sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think like one thing you mentioned about, like, you watch a YouTube video and then like you try to make exactly what they made mm -hmm. and then, yeah. you, then you get discouraged because it doesn't look like what they made <laughs> Yeah, or literally. you make, or you try to make exactly what they made and it looks exactly what they made, but then it's not yours. Yeah. That's and, very true. <laughs> Um, I think in the, like you mentioned development, like in the development space, it's very, it's always like, you can follow what they do in order to learn the tools, mm -hmm. but like, like what you're saying also is like, in order to really learn that skill, you kind of just like pick a project. You're like, Hey, I'm going to build a Twitter clone mm -hmm. and I, and just do it. Yeah. And like, maybe you have to, like, you get some research as tons of ways to like figure out how to do things you want to do and multiple different ways to do it. Right. And like, uh, and like you'll get to a point and then like, you'll learn more things. You're like, Oh wait, why would that? So like, why is this running so slow? And you're like, you can figure out what you figure out what piece of code is making that, um, tweet not post as quickly as it should or mm -hmm. something like that. Yeah. Um, and like, that's one thing you get, um, uh, flack for a lot whenever uh with apps is like re uh like reaction time yeah sure. but um the you know I, I like that you uh brought that up because there's like a lot on this whenever i talk about calling with a lot of people on the podcast like and rightfully so people will talk about like um like the innate like underbelly it's like the uh, not the underbelly but like the underside uh, it's like the, the i don't know the innermost part sure. of like what you're doing it's not it's not just like the physical it's not like like it's not just like you said yours is to create mm -hmm. which is like actually is like that's the it, it's like innate piece uh to actually taking a picture and like doing the things that you do with it mm -hmm. like i i mean, i've heard other people say like it's like from a christian sense it's like everyone's like calling in a sense is to create because mm -hmm. we are created by a creator in his image to go out and do certain things. Yeah. Um, but like, I don't know. It's, um, 
I lost my train of thought again. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it is interesting um, because it's like I, like I said, like mm-hmm. creating in any capacity is always like what I am thinking of. Yeah. Um, but now it's like, um, I well, sorry, I believe that God has put that in me yeah. and he's put um, like the technical skills in me as well. But now as I, um, go on, like I am picking up, um, like the physical tools to then translate that Mm -hmm. in the real world. Yeah. And that's why I can't like stick like video is my main thing, like in terms of my job, but I can't stick to one Mm -hmm. medium. Um, because I'm like, well, I want to try this too. I want to try watercolor and I want to do this and I want to shoot photo and I want to do graphic design and all these things and like creating in different ways. Um, and like scratching that itch in like, like when I complete a video project for church or, um, whatever it may be, um, that is like a totally different, um, which this might sound silly, but it's a totally different like part of my mind than like when I like paint something, um, that it's like, um, that's a whole different side of, um, creating to me. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's always, always scratching that itch and it's Mm -hmm. never, uh, never going to go away. Yeah. (laughs) Never going to stop itching. (laughs) (laughs) It's, hmm. yeah, I think what we're talking about is like, it's the, like, it it comes up in other episodes, but it's the extra, what we're talking about, the, the, the external representation of what our calling is mm-hmm. and like for me my, i feel like my um, like my in my i believe my calling is like the um is to serve it's to it's kind of like I, what i see in this podcast there's a description of this podcast it's mm-hmm. like to provide people with the tools they need to like pursue their calling or like better or better their lives sure and like in this podcast, I'm using that as a piece of that to be external. That's why I want to be a life coach. And like, I, that's why I really, I prefer if I can talk with somebody one-on-one and just have a conversation with them, mm-hmm. my mind's like working of like, not trying to like, trying not to be like, oh, you're doing all these things wrong. But like, um, but seeing the potential in somebody and then like, even just having a conversation with them about how, how they can um, live in that potential. Mm, yeah. um, and that's like, and so everything that I'm doing, everything I'm trying to do now, in some way, I want to work towards that. Yeah. I want to work towards um, building that up and like you, uh, use all these different ways to be creative. Like it's the innate, like it's the external representation of, but they're all, they're all different, but they're all an external representation of what, what you're in, inter- what you're like, it's not just create, it's create something for a, per- for a particular purpose. Mm-hmm. And like, um, yeah. Um like and based off of our conversation, and you can comment on what I said or um answer this question. But <laughs> but uh based off of this conversation that we've had, like or are still having, like what kind of like if you were to talk be talking directly to the listener right now, what I'm kind sure. of like advice would you give them if they're trying to like we were talking about building a skill that pertaining to our calling or something like Mm -hmm. how do you uh, how do you know that how did you like like you said it was always with you but like how do you know yeah i mean that's a fair question like i said like it's easy now for me to say that and it's like i would be lying if i said that i never doubted um that like i would end up here um yeah, it's it's interesting. I am very grateful. Um I just for for context, I so like I said I started doing like photo and then like video in um high school and then I was like, okay, like this is something that I really want to pursue. Um and I remember I had a conversation with my mom when I was in high school that I was like, even if I have to like um if I can't find a job in a creative field mm-hmm. and I have to do I don't know, whatever. Um, that's not necessarily creative, creatively fulfilling. If that's my day job, I'm never going to stop mm-hmm. doing this. Um, and so then I went to school. I went to Pitt for film production. Um, and then, um, 
when I was there, and then I started coming to Amplify, and then I eventually started working at Amplify um, almost four years ago now. That was like 2020. Um, and then that was my first like hands-on professional experience in video production. Yeah. And then even like it's crazy um, to look back in the past four years. Like some of the videos that I was turning in, I was like, this looks very bad. <laughs> I was like... Um, I'm just so, um, grateful for like the opportunities that I've had and the development that I've had through that. Um, and then I'm, I'm not getting to your question directly, but, um, (laughs) (laughs) essentially, I, sorry, now I went on a a tangent was, can you restate the question? Yeah, I, I was, I was like, I need this context in my mind and then I forgot what I, my last thing was going to be. Essentially, um, what advice would you give to the listener right now? Yeah. Based off of our conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, um, especially in the, I'll just speak to the creative field because that's yeah. what I know the most about. Um, like I said, like you just have to constantly be creating and you have to constantly be um, like refining what your creative voice is mm-hmm. and learning um, the technical skills to like, translate what you're thinking so um it um it is a hard market to like break into um especially if you are trying to like build your own business and like you know uh like my wife ashley and i do like i said we do um wedding photo and video together um and that is something that kind of just um fell into our lap that like we just connections through church. We're like, Hey, you do photo at the church. Like, can you do, can you shoot my wedding? And then like it kind of snowballed. Um, and it, it's just one of those things that like you have to always be creating for yourself and for your portfolio and for, um, the people around you to see your skill. Yeah. Um, but yeah, even, um, w- not necessarily when it comes to like um, tangible creative things. Um, whenever you um, like figure out what your calling is, um, it is one of those things that like once you like fully dial in on yeah. it and you feel that it's like there isn't um, there isn't another option. Yeah. Like I kind of said that earlier, but it's like one of those things of like I'm when you fully realize what your calling is, what your passion is, it is so like central to who you are. Mm -hmm. And even if it isn't um, like your job, um, like you just have to fully press into that Um, because even if you don't and you don't pursue that in some capacity, like that's not going to go away. I don't think like if I um, had a different job and I was never creating anything, I would be a lot less happy than I am right now Mm -hmm. because it's like, that is something that I feel like God has put inside of me. And it in that sense would be like wasted potential on like what I feel like I was designed to do and, um, the skills that I enjoy, you know, exercising stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, very practically, um, you just have to, you just got to do it, which I know is not, um, <laughs> entirely helpful sometimes, but, um, yeah, creatively specific with the creative field, you, you can watch, um, as many movies as you want, but until you know how to do it hands on yourself, that doesn't mean anything Yeah, in my opinion. No, I think that makes a lot of sense. Um, it's interesting because, like, I mean, this is just like the, um, like the uh, character of the podcast. Mm-hmm. I've like, you, I don't know how many times like that that kind of thing happens. Like, what was Lee was kind of said in a certain way of like, um, like he's it was like failure is the only failure is not starting. Mm-hmm. And that's good. Um. And that's essentially what you were saying. Like, like you're like, you have to like actually do it. Yeah. Like if you want, like I, um, like this one uh, thing that John Maxwell has said, um, he, um, 
we get asked the question, like people ask him like how they can start writing books and he asks if they write and they say no and he's, <laughs> he's like, like well there's step one <laughs> <laughs> and like he's like well do yeah. you write or you write that's it yeah yeah it's i saw i forget what, where this was from but this is stuck with me and it essentially is echoing the same thing that yeah. we've already said um but i think it was this was years ago. It was some director who was asked a similar question. Mm -hmm. Um, and he was like, you can research if you want to build a house, you can research as much as you want on materials and like structure and zoning and all of these things you need to know. But, um, until you actually go out and do it, like you're not going to, you're not going to know what to do when you run out of nails until (laughs) you actually are in that position and you have to, scramble and and pivot and stuff like that yeah um and yeah it's just one of those things that like there are um there are tons of people that know more than me Mm -hmm. obviously that's you can quote me on that (laughs) Um, but um there are also um i don't know you can know as much as you can research on something you can especially now nowadays you can watch hours of YouTube videos and whatever on the best settings for the Sony FX3 and this is the lens you should buy and this is the monitor you should buy and if you do that and you shoot in 60 frames per second then it's going to look good and it's like you need you need to be comfortable with the camera and know what you're doing for it to look good yeah and um I don't know people always get caught up in the details Mm -hmm. on like especially all of that stuff I just said of like, I need this lens and it's $2,500 and I need to do this and that, and then I'll be good. And yeah. then I'll be able to do this. And it's like, in reality, if you want to create something like the best camera that you have is the one that you have with you. Yeah. Um, that's like the best option. Um, and I have shot with very expensive cameras and I've shot with very cheap cameras and um, it only makes a difference in the story that you're trying to tell Hmm. you know yeah is that is the heart of it um and you can um you can translate it in any way Mm -hmm. you know with any any tools at your disposal Mm -hmm. this is why i um i like to take notes and i wasn't taking notes guys so just i I just (laughs) oh no i was just listening (laughs) um i know you can tell that you like you genuinely understand that like it's not it's like not just the it's not just the steps you know it's mm-hmm. not just this like you do a, a you do a b and c and then you're good yeah um i like the thing that you said about the nails and like you don't know what ha- you don't know how to um like you don't know how to um fix something before it's broken yeah right you don't literally and like uh it's we're like we're talking like uh like knowledge versus wisdom mm-hmm. it's like knowledge like I, I i love reading books i i i haven't read a lot of those books i have on my shelf but like <laughs> i love reading books and the hardest part is always the application mm-hmm. it's the hardest part like you can read like you you can read books you can like you can go through and i i've said on this podcast before i have a whole episode about why you should read books <laughs> <laughs> yeah but then like the next step is applying the knowledge that you just learned yeah. Um. Like I have books on how to um better how to better manage your time, and then but if I just read that book, put it on the shelf, and didn't do nothing in yeah. the book, then it's pointless. You're like, nice. Now I know how to do that, <laughs> and I'm not going to do it. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's useless. So it's like the the concept of like going to YouTube videos is good, and like people should research and on like maybe un- and understand how to do things. Mm-hmm. Like. Oh yeah. Don't get me wrong. I look stuff up on YouTube yeah, all the time Right. <laughs> when literally like the same type of thing you were doing earlier where it's like, I don't know how to do this one thing in premiere. I'm like premiere pro tips and blah, 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 whatever. And then I look it up, but then I have it and I've right. used it and then I can, I build off of that. Yeah. The amount of, um, like little niche things I've learned in like so many different um, that's going to sound boastful, but it's no. just like <laughs> through doing little things like that where right. I'm like, Oh crap. Like, I don't know how to, how to fix this problem I have. Yeah. And then it's like, well, look it up. And then now I have that. And now that's not going to happen again. Mm-hmm. You know? So I think, um, there's like my, my career is considered, I, I don't know. I, I've never heard like people use, I mean, I've heard people say it, but like, it's not, I don't know if there's like, like categories of jobs in this way, but like 
uh, being a developer is a very big problem solving career. Mm -hmm. It's like, yes, your job is essentially solving problems. Yeah. Um, and, or like you're given the, what people want the solution to be and you have to figure out how to get to that point. Yeah. And like, I feel like that's like, you can, that can be, literally be like what you are doing with you. Like I want, yeah, I, I want to have pictures and videos and like, they don't know exactly what they, what they don't know exactly what they want, but you know, like based off what they said mm -hmm. and how to use their expertise to get to that point. Yeah. Um, that's kind of what Bethany was talking about on in her episode where she, she like designs communities after that natural disasters. Yeah. And she talks with, um, the community members and then, um, goes up i'm going off on a tangent but the uh yeah, i'm with you but like the uh point i'm trying to get was trying to get to before is that like the whenever you're, you you'll see those step this processes this processes of like you look up like how do i like edit a video how do I, or how do for me like how do you build an app in this mm -hmm. and well, a lot of time in development give you the basics it'll give you like this is how you set it up this is what you do and then like it's kind of like then like you're kind of just like w w I don't know exactly what you want to do so like this is just how you start yeah and then um, if you want to do particular things you have to look at particular things but like if you look at something that gives you like literally how to do a whole project it's like the I think like there's a lot of things that will tell you the step by step process and that's if everything goes perfectly mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> That's when those steps work, yeah. and then uh, otherwise, yeah, like you'll get like the, like you have to work, figure out what the sub steps are of like uh, like one B through like Z sometimes. Yeah, and you're like, I ran out of nails. What do I do now? Yeah, <laughs> you know, and figuring out that in between. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I. Um, <laughs> that's funny. Um, in the same sense, it's like um, I can, you know, look up. Um, how to best you know key light an interview or whatever and mm -hmm. like get that sense and like how to edit in this way whatever um but i can't look up how to make an interesting easter opener for amplify church 2024 right that doesn't exist <laughs> so like i have to pull from all these other references and um similar to what i was saying earlier of just like doing it um is i'm always like consuming well everybody these days is always consuming content mm -hmm. and you're always um seeing these different methods of communication and of um visual information coming at you um and whether that is something more you know complete and like fulfilling of like you know like a movie or like even like a long um series you mm -hmm. know stuff like that or it's like literally a TikTok or like something, right. you know, much more surface level, I guess you could say. Um, but it, I'm always um, referencing other things that I've seen. And it's like, well, I like the way that they communicated this idea or the way that this edit or whatever made you feel. Yeah. Um, and combining um, that with like actual skills of like, how can I recreate that? Mm -hmm. um, and not that kind of sounds like I steal stuff, but uh, which I definitely have before, but that's a different thing. <laughs> um, no, but like um, being able to, uh, this is another thing that I say to um, like creative people is like, um, it's one thing to be able to look at um, either a picture or a video or a painting or whatever it is. It's one mm -hmm. thing to be able to look at that and say that you like it. It's right. a totally different one to by, be able to dissect what it is you like about that and how to translate that into what you're trying to do. So mm -hmm. like even like with the Easter example, um, like there are, you know, thousands of similar, if you look up uh, church Easter opener video, whatever, there's yeah. thousands of examples from, huge churches from small churches or whatever. Um, and you could, um, just say like, Oh, I like this. I like this script, this, you know, pass passage of scripture that they used or whatever. Um, or I like the way it looks. And like, that's something that especially like clients that don't know, um, this isn't church related, but, um, clients that like don't actually know what they want yeah. or know how to articulate that. They're like, Oh, I like, it. I like the way it looks. And it's like, well, do you like, the composition of it do you like the lighting the color or right. like the edit of it and there's like oh it just looks nice mm -hmm. and it's like okay well <laughs> now i need to go from there and like figure out um you know what 
it is from that and what I can translate. Um, but yeah, that is a big thing is like being able to, um, articulate and dissect like this specifically is what I like about this or what I don't like about this. And then using that information to move forward. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that's going through a lot of some of the stuff that you just said. Um, the, and then I have one question, then we'll wrap up after that. But, um, but the, uh, based off of that, I, I'm, I might, I might have like, I was thinking about it in a way of kind of how I was thinking about things before. Uh, like you're taking up like the, the person's feedback of like, it's like not technical feedback. It's just like, I like it. Yeah. But it's also like, and so then you have to use your technical knowledge to understand like, okay, what's good and what's bad mm-hmm. and then go from there and to re- to be able to recreate that kind of stuff again. Yeah. Um, which, okay. I can get that. Um, yeah, my mind was going kind of in a different direction a little bit, but it was just like, um, kind of going with what I was saying before, like you talking, you're talking, you're talking to them, getting their feedback. Okay. They like something about it. And then you just see what's good and what's bad and keep it, you know, looking good. I don't know. There wasn't much there for me to say, but <laughs> I think I just, uh, thought I, uh, it's okay. I don't you're know. Good. But, uh, so final question before wrap, wrapping up, um, like, do you have, like, a game plan moving forward with, like, your creative, with your mm. career, um, with side businesses? Yeah. Like, what's that look like? Um, yeah, I um, I do. <laughs> I, it's interesting because, like, um, all of the creative endeavors, I guess, that I have now, most of them, at least, have kind of just... Um, like, the opportunity has presented itself. Yeah. And then I feel like I've stepped into it. I haven't... Um, necessarily like sought out like i really want to um find a job at a church making videos i really want to break into the wedding industry i really want to do whatever um it feels like the opportunity is presenting itself and then i step into that which i'm very grateful for um and that doesn't mean that i'm not actively pursuing all those things um but yeah i um feel like i um, I got a lot of different pots on the stove, if you will. Yeah. <laughs> um, where, uh, Ash, my wife, we both work at church. Um, we both just work part time and then, um, we shoot weddings. And then I also, um, have a production company doing, um, like freelance ad work and branding videos and stuff like that. Um, so I'm kind of simultaneously pursuing all of those things. Um, and we are, um, just figuring out like what is the best way to like, um, I don't know, keep watering all those seeds. Right. If that makes sense. Um, because they're all very different, um, experiences and they're all very different, um, businesses and creative modes of creative expression. If that makes sense. Yeah. Um, because something that I struggle with sometimes is like obviously working at a church and creating very, um, Christ focused content, if you will. Mm-hmm. Um, it's very, it, it's a, a very linear process between, um, me feeling inspired, um, by God and by the talents that I feel like he has put inside me. Um, and then translating that into content that then it inspires other people, um, in their relationship with God. That to me feels very, um, linear. Um, it's a totally different thing to be a Christian couple that's shooting a wedding when that isn't necessarily going to be a, um, uh, a Christ focused piece of content, I guess, if that makes sense. So then it's like, how do I, um, still create with like my God given, um, abilities Mm -hmm. in a way that glorifies him when it's a totally different um, mode of communication and it's a totally different, um, like purpose of that, you know, video obviously. And the same thing, especially with, um, ad stuff and like working with clients where it's like, um, they're hiring you to make something that will then make them money. And that is like a totally different, um, like goal obviously of the, that content. Um, so it's like, um, 
I don't know. It's it's a weird dance mm-hmm. and but be, between doing all those different things, but honestly like I just keep the same mindset um throughout all of them. Um and it's just it's just one of those things that um you kind of just push into and you just figure it out along the way. All that to say on your original question, um that I um, am very grateful that I'm able to, um, in some senses, work for myself in two of those three. Yeah. Um, and I'm very, I love our community at church and the the health of the staff. Um, and that is a, you know, it's a beautiful opportunity that we've been able to have. Um, but I, other than that opportunity at church, I don't know if I could fully work on a a staff in a creative role, um, that wasn't working for myself because, um, it feels limiting if that makes sense. Yeah. So all that to say in one sense or another, I will always be making things. I, um, will always be trying to do things. Um, not, I was going to say for myself. I, I enjoy working for myself, but I don't want to do things for myself. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, um, it's just whatever I can do, hmm. you know, to keep creating things and keep getting paid for it. People keep paying me to make silly little videos. I'll do it, you know, all day long. <laughs> <Nice>. so, <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I got a little wrap up questions. But uh, I want to thank you for be- being on. Of course. Um, Thanks for having me. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, so you mentioned some of a couple of your businesses. And usually I don't ask this question because most people that I talk to don't have businesses. <laughs> <laughs> but like, um, if someone would want to reach out to you, how could they do that? Mm, yeah. So um, well, my personal Instagram is just my name, just Cole Zimmerman. Um, and then linked there is my wife and I's business, which is Zimmerman Photo Video. And that would be you know, weddings, engagement photos, you know, anything like that. Um, and then my production company is Fount Studios, um, which would be foundstudios.co. It's also on Instagram. And that um, I do freelance branding, ad work, um, commercial, stuff like that. Um, but yeah. Nice. That's pretty much. And then amplifychurch.com. That's <laughs> <laughs> my, other, my other pillar. Sweet. And yeah, we'll put, uh, put those in the show notes for you guys if you want to reach Beautiful. out. Beautiful. Um, and then for the people who like, like to read or listen to podcasts, other Mm -hmm. podcasts, like what kind of, or any other type of resource that you Mm -hmm. might have, what kind of resources do you, or have you recommended to people who are looking to grow in their calling or grow like personal person? Mm -hmm. Um, I would say the Bible. I don't know if you've heard of that one, but no, um, no, I, obviously that is the core of who, I am and what I believe. Um, I honestly, though, in terms of podcasts, I don't listen to most of them or I don't listen to a lot of podcasts. Yeah. um, Because like Ash will listen to stuff when she's working and editing, but I can't listen to anything else when I'm editing a video because it's just the whole thing. Right. So I often don't find time for it. Um, But yeah. And then in terms of um, uh, like creative endeavors, I guess. Um, just especially video, just watch as much content as you can. Right. Um, as much fulfilling content as you can. You don't need to scroll on TikTok all day long. Um, but, uh, (laughs) that is some of, um, the best inspiration I've had is like through movies. I went to school for film, you know, I studied it big time. Um, and yeah, I, I'm blanking on the name now. I read this book in college on um, film production. I'll I'll find it. I'll send it to you. You can okay. link it. Yeah. I forget what it was, um, <laughs> which is not a good sign for me <laughs> recommending it if I don't remember <laughs> the name of it. Um, but it was a lot of um, good concrete advice on um, how to uh, communicate your vision, yeah. if that makes sense. Okay. Um, but yeah, I also, um, I'll be transparent. I don't read as much as I should. Um, I will tell that to all, all your listeners pursuit of, do you, do you have a, a fan base name? The, the pursuers, the, I don't, but that'd be cool. First one's free. You can have that one. Um, <laughs> I'll, I'll be transparent with all the pursuers. That I, I don't read as much as I should. 
<laughs> this coin, you heard it here first. Yeah. <laughs> um, cool. And then final question: uh, Who, like, now you've been on the podcast, mm-hmm. like, who would you recommend hmm. to be on the show? Yeah. Um, I have you had Mike on, Mike to Dominic? I haven't. No. I think he would be very insightful. He, um, if you don't know, this will be a little teaser. Well, unless he says no, he would do it though. Um, he, uh, is also from our church and he, um, is our creative arts director where mm. he's in charge of worship production yep. and creative and everything. And, um, he is, he's wise beyond his years. So I think also, same vein, I would say Ian would be good. Uh, we, I've asked Ian, he won't, it, oh. Lee, Lee did too. But <laughs> That's so sad. I, 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 Ian likes to edit. Yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> it keeps happening, uh, yeah. you know? No, no. I mean, he keeps hearing us talk about him, and he's probably going to have to say yes. So. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah. yeah, cool. All right, well, thanks, Cole, for being on uh, the Pursuit of Calling podcast. And if, guys, you want to reach out or you want to let me know how it went send me a message or an email and you can also share it out on your social medias thank you for listening to this episode see you next time